Hello everyone, and after our test battle report of Fallout Wasteland Warfare, you said you wanted a little bit more, so that is exactly what we're doing. We're going to work our way through the tutorial scenarios, just me by myself against the AI, but the AI in this is pretty diverse. And this time, unlike the test battle report, there is actually objectives for the AI to go after. We're going to go through tutorial scenario number one. It's called Troubled Beginnings. I'll go over the forces and whatnot once we take a look at the book. So this is the scenario. It's basically that the sole survivor has just left the vault, returned to Sanctuary Hills, met a couple of settlers who are having an altercation with some super mutants. The super mutants have trapped dog meat in the middle of the map. They're not too concerned about him because he's, he's stuck there. And as a result, they are just kind of minding their own business and going after these four objectives placed as you see them, which represent traps, I think. They're just checking to see if they've trapped any animals for food. So the survivors have to try and save dog meat. So that's what I'll be doing. You do that by getting with an orange of them. I put them in a little cage, so as long as you get into base to base with the cage, we'll, we'll say that's that's good enough and dog meat is freed and he joins the force. So other than that, uh, there's some stuff about like what the victory conditions are down here and what the forces are specifically gear-wise. Victory conditions are simple. The survivors win if the super mutants are wiped out. The super mutants win if they clear all traps or kill everybody including dog meat, assuming it's freed by then. They clear a trap by getting into base to base with it and doing a strength test. And even though the models don't accurately represent what you're supposed to use here, we're going to do our best. So my side, the survivor side, survivor day one with a 10 mil pistol. We'll take a look at the proper stuff in a second. Two settlers with hunting rifles. They act as a unit, so we just have the one character card, but they, they act on their own. And then the super mutant forces two super mutants with boards and bow action pipe rifles and a brute with a sledgehammer. Other than that you set it up as it's told, you set up the battlefield however you like, as long as the four objectives are where they're supposed to be. So here's the force I'll be controlling, at least as it stands until Dogmeat is rescued. So I don't have Nora that comes in the starter set painted up, so we're just going to use the Soul Survivor loner as the representation of the Soul Survivor, but the stat card being used is slightly different than the one we saw before. It's Soul Survivor Day 1, so this is her just out the vault, or him, I guess, them. They're just out the vault, their stats are not as good as they normally are, and there's the 10 mil pistol he's equipped with. And then both these settlers, despite looking very different, they are both equipped with a hunting rifle, and this is their stat line. Essentially they're kind of glass cannons, they only have 4 HP, but their perception, which they use for the rifles, is pretty good. And then if we rescue dog meat, it's just a basic dog meat as well. Less stats than the Soul Survivor one, I think. And as per usual, he has his dog bite. And here's a quick look at what the AI will be doing. So the Brute has a sledgehammer, as seen there, and he's the tough one with eight endurance. So even though the aviator model is being used, he's still just counting as a bog standard super mutant, as is the other one. So the HP is a little bit low, their perception is a little bit lower. They've got a board for close combat and a bolt action pipe rifle and then there's the AI cards for both of them. So I asked on the test battle report how much dice rolls you would like to see. It was kind of split a little bit. So as a compromise, I won't bother showing movement. If there is only movement in a turn, we'll just do the quick recap style. And if they're shooting, either via the AI shooting me or me shooting the AI, those dice rolls will be on camera. And I won't bother showing on camera rolling for what they're doing, but you can see they're basically if you roll a bottle cap. The super mutants will be concentrating on the objectives. Anything else, they'll pretty much just be going in for the kill. So with that, get set up and get started. So to get the first battle round started, the Soul Survivor has activated. He just moves up red for his basic movement. Uh, sorry, yellow for his basic movement. And then the 10 mil pistol only has range blue. It's just in on that super mutant over there, which normally would be the aviator one, but it's just a bog standard super mutant this time. He's going to use his other action to shoot the 10 mil pistol. So that's the skill die, and then it also gets a bonus black and a green. It only has blue range as well, it can't go beyond that. And his, because again, remember this is the Soul Survivor with the diminished stats, is looking for 5. That is 8 minus 1, it would have done 1 bonus damage, but as a result it has missed. So, now off camera, roll for which random Supermune activates, roll to see what the AI is doing, and then I'll either recap or show them attacking. So the AI's first activation via random chance was the Brute, and the Brute decided he wants to attack, but he's only got close range because of that sledgehammer. So he moved, he moved roughly there, then he did his second action instantly and moved there. It does also mean on his next AI roll, if he gets objective, he is right next to one of the traps, so he could definitely run and quickly check that before continuing to find a target for his sledgehammer. But for now, he's obscured behind there, and it is back over to my side. So one of the two settlers activated next, and remember, although they have the same stats with one stat card, they act independently. 
and they're equipped with the same stuff, obviously, as well, as I see another one of my dog's hairs that gets everywhere. Anyway, this one moved, moved red over to here, and then decided to take a shot with its hunting rifle at the Super Mutant Brute, who is just outside of blue range, so it's blue plus black, which means two bonus green die for extra accuracy get included in the skill roll, and her skill roll, I've already forgotten what it was, it is six, so that's what we're looking for. She got exactly six, although it became four, so that's a hit. Hunting Rifle does base 2 damage, and the Brute has 2 physical armor, of which he blocked 1. So he took, all said and done, a single point of damage on his 8 HP I think he has. So now it's again over to Random Chance for which Super Mutant activates next. So the next AI Super Mutant to activate decided he didn't care about the dog they have in the cage, he didn't care about the humans encroaching on their territory, he only cared about checking his traps because he's hungry. So, he moved over here and over here. He went for this one because this is the objective he could make in two moves. He made it to base to base. He has to wait until next turn to do a strength check on it to see if he checks the trap successfully. But if he does, that'll be then one quarter to the way of winning already. So, even though he's ignoring the incoming threat, he's doing what they need to do. Now, the thing is, with the AI, if I roll on his table next time and it gets an attack or a move, Technically, he's supposed to ignore the fact he's on an objective, and I did say last time they are They're not like super stringent with the rules regarding AI if there's something that fits the theme more you can do that instead I mean that's specifically what it says in the rulebook But again, it's, it's kind of down to you lot Do you want me to adhere to the results of the AI dice precisely or do you want me to adapt because if he doesn't roll a check objective next turn on that die He's supposed to just walk away but Either way, we've got one more settler to activate so for the last activation from my side in Battle Room 1, because Dogmeat isn't free, the other settler moved up yellow, and then he's within blue to fire his hunting rifle at the Supermune next to Dogmeat over there, who will be the last person activating, which means it is white skill check, plus two yellow, looking for six it was, yes it is. He got five, plus one armor break, that one is a blank. So he ignores one bit of armor, or how much armor does a basic Supreme have? Basic Supreme has just a single point of armor which has been negated. So it got through fully and has done two damage. Where's my two damage marker? There it is. It's done two damage to that Supreme there who has four HP remaining. And it's him to end the turn. So the final Supreme on his AI got attack. And he can reach the settler but just shot him from there. So he is going to stand still and fire at this settler twice with his pipe action, sorry, bow action pipe rifle, which is skill die plus green plus yellow. Now he only has a perception of four, so he's got to get four or under, and he gets two shots at it. That's a six with no minuses for a shot. Whiffs the second shot for his second action. That is an exclamation mark which counts as a one, so it doesn't even need the minus one. He doesn't get any crit bar because he's not special, but he does get an armor break. Settlers have. One armor, so that's it negated, it just goes straight through and it does two damage. So that settler takes two damage. Oh, let me just to reach over for the icon. He takes two damage and he has two health left. That's pretty nasty. But with that, everything resets and we go into battle round two. Oh sorry, as a, a quick addendum, the tutorial scenarios haven't introduced event cards at the end of battle rounds yet, which I did use in the tutorial battle, well not the tutorial battle, sorry, the test battle report. Uh, I'm not going to use them here until such time as the tutorial tells me to introduce them, so that's why we're not drawing a card at the end of the turn. So with that, straight into battle round 2. So the Soul Survivor got battle round 2 started, moved up its base distance of red, and is going to take a shot with a 10mm pistol at the Super Mutant hiding behind the cage there. Next turn he can get close enough and then still have an action left to free dog meat, assuming nothing terrible happens. So he is taking a shot, let's see what he can get, that is an 8 minus 1, that is a whiff and a half, plus I believe his skill would actually be minus 2 because the Super Mutant is slightly obscured and would get the cover bonus. But either way, it doesn't matter because it was a miss, which is a shame. So now, over to the first Super Mutant. So the first Super Mutant to activate is this one over here. I was wrong, you don't have to be in base to base, you have to be within orange. So let's just say he was. He has to be within two, so to use his movement previously efficiently. So anyway, he has to do a check. He got checked the objective, so there's no need to uh, concern ourselves with whether or not he would just leave the objective and go do something else. But I would still like to hear your input on that. Anyway, he needs six or under to do a successful strength test. He got exactly six. That trap has been checked. Whether or not there's something in it is irrelevant for the mission. Uh, not for his belly though. 
So now there's three objectives left that super mutants need to check and if they check them all they win instantly but for now it's back over to survivor. So my next activation is going to be this settler here and she's going to stand still and take two pot shots at long range at the super moon brute rather because he is the credible threat. So long range again is two green plus the skill check die on the hunting rifle and it's requiring a six for the first shot. That's a seven but it becomes a six becomes a five so that does go through for two damage. The brute has two physical armor does not save either of it so he takes two damage I don't have another plus two for now so just do the two damage there and then the other shot that's an eight. Oh, seven, six, five, four. it actually hit armor blocked it all no damage there so two damage all said and done three damage in total of his eight HP that's that settler done now it's either the super mutant but brute why do you want to say butte or the super mutant over there it was the super mutant next to dog meat that activated and got an objective roll so he abandoned his prisoner in the cage and abandoned shooting at the survivor he could have killed, sorry the settler, and moved twice round the corner there ending his turn within, actually I think he might be just out of orange range but either way if he gets objective again he can definitely get to and do at least one check on that. So now it's over to the other settler to end off the turn. So the remaining settler is going to take two long range shots at the super mutant that hurt him. There is scenery in the way so it's a minus two penalty so he's counting his skill four. First shot, that hits, does one armor break, actually got a zero, with one armor break. So that's two damage with one armor break. The normal super, super mutants only have one armor so the two damage gets through and that super mutant is down to two health remaining. We'll just pop that over there because he might be about to die. Let's see, the other shot. One of the dies rolled off, but that's an eight. Probably unlikely, let me just stretch. Minus one. Second shot missed, but that super mutant is two away from death. And that's that turn, so now it's just the brute to end off battle round two. The brute has decided that the objective is more important, so he's moved close enough to that trap to do a strength test, which is six or under. He got a two. That trap has been checked, whether or not, again, there was anything in it is irrelevant for the mission. That is the mutants halfway, sorry super mutants, halfway towards winning and that also brings us to the end of battle round two so we're starting all things over again with battle round three and Dogmeat is finally going to be freed. So it's a real simple start to the third battle round, the soul survivor moved up and interacted with the cage releasing the hounds so Dogmeat will now be able to get an activation and that gives the survivors a numbers advantage as well but the super mutants do only have two objectives to get and there is one that's very close however it is still randomized which one of them is activating and how they act when they activate so let's see so the brute was the first to activate and he got that you should go for the objective however they're very far away so went down to his, the bottom of his card which basically just says he should either then go after the nearest target the healthiest or the best choice these two settlers were almost equidistant but what he chose to do then was move normal and then charge so I do have a question based on, like, I'm not 100% sure how it is in the rules. You get your charge bonus, although if you have a battle cry, the AI has to battle cry, so he will. But he doesn't have any actions left, because he moved and then charged. So does the charge bonus, whether it be a battle cry or an extra green or an extra black, black dice, depending on your decision, do they carry over to the first strike he's going to do in the next turn? I'm not sure, because it doesn't say you get a free attack off of a charge, it just says you pick a bonus. So, I'm not 100% sure. I think that means it applies to the first attack he does against the person he charged when it becomes available because he's out of actions this turn. Either way, we're going to say that's his turn, done, and now it's over to one of the survivors. So for the next settler activation, he's going to stay where he is and he's going to fire two long range shots with his hunting rifle again at the super mutant that's almost dead with two HP remaining behind cover, so looking for fours. And that is a flat miss because that's a fail for his first shot, second shot, that's a two so it's hit, would have been a one, plus an extra damage, so that's three damage coming in, the super mutant has one armor and does not block it, so that is three damage, so that super mutant, alas, is murderized, he is gone, which means that the next enemy activation has to be the super mutant up there in the corner. So our super mutant chum over here is still focused on the objectives which is quite surprising, so he double moved for his turn got him over there behind cover basically heading towards the trap over there he's got a check it's it's on him essentially so now the rest of my survivors get to act how they like so that's dog meat 
and the survivor that's locked in combat. She can pull away from combat if she chooses, although he'll, he'll get a free hit. Um, I guess we'll think about that in a second. So we're going with the less complicated of the two remaining actions. Dogmeat charged into contact with the super mutant over there, so his dog bite is the skill check die, blue, green, and yellow, and for the charge bonus, adding in a black. And he needs to roll. This dog meat is agility eight. Yep, eight. Looking for eights. Got four, so it's hit. That's all irrelevant. That on his dog bite. Oh, I think he's broken his leg. I'll look into that in a second then. But for now, it's the base damage plus one. So that is, ooh, that is three physical damage. He has one armor. Nope. He took three of his six HP right there. I'll double check what the limping symbol means. So it wasn't actually a foot, it was an arm in like a bandage. And what that means is uh, Dogmeat's like grabbing his arm and tearing at him like he does in the game. And what that means for the poor super mutant is he is suffering minus two to all skill checks. And obviously the impressive amount of damage that Dogmeat did in a single turn. All right, back over to the last settler. So the settler over here backed out of combat, giving the brute a free swing at her. Forgot to do that roll on camera, apologies. He smacked her upside the head for half her health. She took two damage on the retreat. So now she has one action left, because I believe retreating is an action. So she's going to shoot her hunting rifle. It's at close range, so it's two yellows instead of two greens. There's no cover in between the two of them, so it's sixes. And that is a six with three armor break. That ignores all his armor, so that's just straight two damage. Putting him at what, five in total taken? Five out of eight damage taken. And that's also the end of the round. So on to battle round four. So once again, the first activation for a new battle round four in this case is the soul survivor. He moved slightly back so that he was within blue to shoot at the brute because the brute is the threat. So we have our dice here and we are going for fives. That would be seven, which is a great shame because that would have done five damage. Well, that was his only other action. So now it's either the Brute or the surviving Supermune. So it's the Supermune over here that wants to activate and he wants to do the objective. He has been dedicated to the objective the whole match, which is impressive, I guess. So he wants to pull away from combat because he can go check that trap this turn. So that means Dogmeat gets a free minus two attempt to smack him. So it's usually eights, but he needs sixes. We have the dice here. That is an eight, it becomes a seven. So he gets away and he can move yellow, so he can definitely get within orange. So I'll just shift him over there. And his other action is a strength check. Although presumably the minus two also applies to strength. So what does that bring his strength down to? That brings his strength down to four, making the skill check harder. He failed it, but he gets a quick action. I'm not sure if that applies on a skill check. There isn't much he can do from there anyway. But he failed it, so he'll have to try again next turn. So straight back to my team. This settler is activating and pumping the hunting rifle into the brute twice. Close range, needing sixes. First one hits with three armor break, so that utterly ignores his armor and does two damage flat. So he has one HP remaining. This is our chance. She can do it. Sixes. Six becomes a five with one armor break. He has two armor... No, he has one armor remaining. Oh, he's dead either way though, even if he does a full block which he didn't, so he took two more damage. The Brute is down. I repeat, the Brute is down. That means there is just the other Super Mutant left. He could feasibly do okay. It depends whether or not Dogmeat kills him, which we're going to find out, because it's just it's Dogmeat and the Settler left to go. So this could be the end of the match right here. Dogmeat has charged the Super Mutant with his first action, and now we get to see whether or not it ends. So Black Die in for the charge bonus. This is his bite attempt. He is looking for eight or under. Very high chance of getting through. That's a six with a minus three. So yes, it definitely went through. That's two, uh, and that's a star, yeah. So the star plus the cola bottle on his bike. What does that do? Uh, quick action and removes reactions. Plus it ignores one armor. He only has one armor. So it does two damage, leaving him all, Oh, he has one left, because he had three damage. He has one damage remaining. I'm not sure whether this Settler can get line of sight to take a shot. We'll have to see. The Settler moved up red and can indeed make out the Super Mutant, but his base is slightly obscured, which I mean, I, I believe means he does get his cover bonus of minus two. So, that means that the Settler needs fours. He failed but got a quick action, which is a great shame because that would have killed him. So we do actually have to go into a new battle round. 
and it's just going to go immediately to dog meat trying to bite him twice so I'd say let's just see if he succeeds because if he doesn't then something could happen here so actually his dog bite is just that base without the charge bonus looking for eight does it end his first bite attempt fails miserably I think he had a quick action there but it's all right he failed all right we actually have a we have a game <laughs> So we'll go into battle round five then with Dogmeat's turn already done and it's the Supermoon's turn to activate. So the Supermoon over by Dogmeat who's had his turn because we technically did it at the end of the last one to try and end it immediately. He apparently has gotten angry because he's ignoring the objectives now and is going for an attack. So he's using his plank of wood or his board to smack Dogmeat but he's minus two because of the wound that Dogmeat gave his arm. So he needs fours. First attempt. Nothing. Second attempt. Does go through. How much damage does the board do? The board does two damage and base dog meat has two armor. He doesn't block it, so dog meat does take two damage. And now all these people down here get to act, so I'll line up some shots and we'll try and finish this. So a few quick moves have been done here. Soul Survivor moved twice to get to where you see him. This settler moved twice to where you can see her. This settler is standing still and is shooting at the Superman to try and finish him. So the way shooting into combat works in this is you actually get a plus two modifier because of the larger target because the whole melee counts as your target although that's negated by him slightly being obscured so it's just a basic roll on his on his six. So hunting rifle at long range it's gonna be firing it twice looking for six however the successful hits then roll to see if you've accidentally shot your own person. <laughs> so anyway sixes first shot it's a five, it's already enough with the dice falling over, it was a minus two on the floor. So that hit went through, let's see if the other one does as well. Just because the other one doesn't, so only one went through. And then you're supposed to allocate dice, uh, we'll just roll this and say, actually no, you're supposed to roll the armor die. We'll say the super mutant is one and two, dog meat is three and four. The super mutant got hit by the shot. So, the super mutant has one armor. Does he, well it doesn't matter if he negates the one, which he did successfully but the base damage is two so that super mutant from long range has been killed i don't actually know if the minus two applies to his armor probably not because he doesn't have two armor to start with but that does take us to the end of the game so that was interesting and that was just the first tutorial scenario from the campaign book that comes in the two player starter set it slowly builds up additional rules the next one we we're taking a trip to fort davies and that introduces investigation markers, searchable markers, and a slightly larger enemy force as well, I think. But for the most part, it's the same two squads you just saw fighting here, slowly building up the rules, and then eventually getting some power armor involved and other harder stats. I will say some of the, the tutorial scenarios ask for miniatures that aren't in the two-player starter set, which is very strange and awkward, because I think some of them need three super mutants and they only, well, Three super mutants plus a brute, and it gives you a brute and two super mutants. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Anyway, I hope you like this style, showing the, the combat roles, but keeping like the AI roles and the movement out just to streamline things a little bit. You can let me know. And if you'd like to see more, please do tell me you do in the comments and subscribe if you want to be alerted when things go live. Thank you for the support, and I will hopefully see you in the future for some more Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Ta for now.